Clayster joining Dallas, a.k.a. Envy, from an organization point of view makes perfect sense. It really does. In the midst of all the changes that are currently going on and in the, in the ahead of franchising, I want to focus on this one specifically. Not bringing out the roster into question, but I want to focus and kind of hone in on this move specifically because I think that Dallas made an excellent decision here. I think that this choice for me makes so much sense since because they got a cornerstone piece that in year one will benefit them greatly and for a number of different reasons. Now, let's be realistic for a second, right? Hex, Scump, NRG, Chicago, whatever you really want to call them, they're going through a transition, right? They're going through a phase right now of which they have to change their location. They're changing their name. They are no longer independent. And the feeling of what was Optic and what that means is now different, right? It isn't the same way that it used to be. And in that occurring, it will leave fans to possibly think about what other organizations are out there, right? When you're going through a new phase, when you're giving yourself a facelift, there are going to be some fans who venture out and say, you know what, what else is out there? What other opportunities could be out there? What teams do I really want to support? Because the guys that I really liked, from rumors at least, are going elsewhere, right? The, the 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 main team that I was maybe a fan of, that I was starting to really kind of build a basis around, they're all now in different locations, and maybe I don't know which one to choose. Obviously, a, a high majority, a high percent of that will be going with Hex to Chicago, and what's rumored to be Scump there as well. But regardless, you can look at this and say there's going to be some time where fans reiterate, they start to kind of look around and say, you know what, I was kind of a fan of the Optic name. I kind of liked that one a lot. Maybe I don't want to join this new brand called NRG that I'm not the most familiar with and going to kind of venture into franchising, of which I don't really know the history of this brand. I mean, Hex is here. That's it's great, but what really is in it for me, if you kind of get that point of view? And so for when, and depending on how much, but for when they do that, when fans start to do that, for when fans start to look around at other teams, they begin to survey different rosters, who will they look at outside of the previous Optic players? Because it's very evident who it's going to be. Clayster, no question about it. He is and has been the face of organizations and will be the contributing face on Dallas. Right? Let's kind of take a little bit of a, of a step back a little bit. Let's kind of visit, revisit history, if you will. He was the reason why FaZe was looked upon so heavily in Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3, why they were such a storyline in the earlier phases of the Jetpack era. It was his storyline of being the player, the content creator, the face, the phenom that threw a wrench into the end of Advanced Warfare for the boys on Apt Optic, right? Whenever it was the, the tagline, throw me to the wolves and I'll come back leading the pack. During an organization's infancy in e United, he was the reason why they were the team to root for, right? It's, it was so evident at that moment because literally you looked at e United and they had previously won championships, right? or a championship in specific, but then you had the Twins, you had Gunless, obviously, or rather previously, who we stepped in for, you had Silly, but no one really knew who these guys were. They didn't really know the Twins, right? They didn't know Prestini, they didn't really know Arcees, they had no idea who Gunless was. This guy just randomly stormed onto the scene and looked like the instant best player, and despite Silly's vast history, no one really knew who he was, despite his runs through Advanced Warfare, and his long, extended history, and being a professional player. But, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of hone in on this because all those things known, all those things considered, he joins this roster of which guys aren't really as well known. And for me, this is, in my history of call, of covering Call of Duty Esports, this for me was one of the most eye-opening opportunities or one of the most eye-opening um, times that I have ever had in covering this esport. When Optic was knocked out of champs in World War II, who did the crowd root for? Right? Who, who were the ones that they rooted for. Surely, who, who was it exactly? Did they root for Envy? Did they root for FaZe? No, they didn't root for Envy. They didn't root for FaZe or Team Caliber or Rise Nation or even Splice. You know who they rooted for? You know who they cheered for and instantly got behind? E United. And it wasn't even close. It wasn't even close who they decided to root for. As soon as Optic was knocked out in groups, everyone instantly went over to the Clayster camp. They went right over to that team, they put their arms around them, and they instantly supported them as that fan base had, you know, little by little started to develop. But in general, the familiar face was Clayster, right? And I'm going to cover Clayster a little bit more in depth because 
since complexity, and we're going back obviously a little bit, but you talk about you know late Black Ops 2, early Ghost, just in general for complexity, that kind of timing. Clayster has joined four real organizations, right? NV and at AW it lasted what two events? TK lasted in, what maybe a month in Ghosts. Four real organizations. Optic being one of those and being the first, where his career really began to explode. People have known the name of Clayster, but he really started to kind of develop his fan base on this team and exploded with popularity, right? He won a gold medal. Uh, he was a part of one of the most known teams in Call of Duty Esports history, especially when it comes down to the Optic side. That team is regarded as one of the most well-known ever. He was later replaced, right, by probably the most popular one of all time, the Dynasty. What did he do at that point? He found himself on denial when he was sent right to the Wolves and came back winning a world championship. Later, leaves denial for FaZe, and in the process of that, helps make the rivalry one of the best in Call of Duty Esports history and being one of the biggest tests uh, to the Optic Dynasty at the end of Advanced Warfare. A lot of people kind of forget about that time that Optic was obviously so dominant in AW, but at the very end of its life cycle, there was a team called FaZe that started to make a little bit of a resurgence led by someone who used to play for that team, which orchestrated a great storyline and carry on, and rather carried on one of the biggest storylines in Cold Esports history, FaZe v. Optic. Later, Clayster joins E United and joins them on the ground level, right? Raises the awareness of the team, makes them instantly a household name and continue to do so, and made them by far one of the most popular teams in the esport. And in the final event as a team, as we've known that E United will not enter into franchising this year, but the final event as E United, he closes things out by winning a world championship. Again, four teams in which he accomplished two world championships, one gold medal. He gained a ton of personal notoriety. He grew brands and made some of the best storylines Call of Duty has ever seen. And that's a wonderful track record. <laughs> that is a fantastic, uh, you know, kind of piece of work that you can look at and say and just marvel at and say that is probably one of the most impressive that we have seen. And just four organizations and four, he had made an impact on each and every one, that track record is exactly what Envy needs. They need someone in the midst of a shaky time right now for Hex to build the brand and be the face, right? That's like, uh, and this is what I have to, to kind of hone in on because there are a lot of people out there who are, who are very much of the mindset that everyone thinks the same way that they do in terms of being what is labeled as the Optic audience is what I'm calling them right now. No longer the fan base, but the audience of Optic. Not everyone knows that this is happening, guys. Like, not, not everyone knows the transition that's currently going on right now. It's going to take months, maybe even a full-on year for people to realize and say, oh, yeah, this isn't the same team that I know of. Did they replace the roster? Not everyone is as hardcore of watching podcasts, watching videos, reading reports, seeing news stories. Not everyone is as honed in as the hardcore audience in terms of knowing what is going on at all times. Not everyone knows that Hex is on energy. Not everyone knows that Scump is no longer on the Optic team anymore. And there's going to be a lot of fans who are going to be cut off guard by this. And I think people are going to be somewhat shocked that there still will be a fan base for Optic. Who knows how that's going to kind of last. But just in general, this is a very interesting period to see how big and how quickly this will start to form. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's going to be huge. And it will be huge, but not to the same extent that some people are thinking it will. Now, does this move of adding Clayster make them the fan favorite? Of course not, right? Let's, let's not be stupid here. We all know what the biggest fan base is going to be instantly. It's going to be energy, and it's going to be in Chicago, right? That fan base by far is going to be the biggest. But instantly, putting Clayster in this team makes them top three. No question about it in my mind. Top three, and as a brand in franchising, not only do you want to win, but you also want to to sell. As I've said, organizations are making a decade plus long investment with franchising. With Call of Duty franchising, getting someone that will bring in an audience will always benefit you, right? It doesn't hurt to get sponsorships. In fact, that may or may not be one of the primary uh, or rather source revenues that you can kind of get. So, it's not necessarily just his popularity, right? The plus is not just the popularity. He's also helped work with young players, right? He's also helped lead teams to championships, two world championships, and is one with two totally different lineup, 
lineups rather at that event. But equally, I think that both parties here in this situation of Dallas, aka Envy, and Clayster are very similar, and that both of them are incredibly long running. Right, we talked about Envy, the oldest brand in Call of Duty esports. That's one thing that they're gonna really hold on to is that kind of you know established in type mentality. And then Clayster, right, the oldest, if not one of the oldest pros in the game today, right? And it's no surprise that these two are not going to be working alongside each other. I think this is exactly the move that Envy needs to make, right? If you don't land the optic guys or necessarily don't land the scumps of the world, who do you go with? The next best thing. The guy who has led teams to world championships and holds a track record on every organization that he has been on. The last four, the last main four, he has done something monumental with and has made them instantly a, or rather one, of the fan favorites. So there's a reason in Dallas announcing him first, as he is the foundation. He will be one of the many, but the primary face of of this team. He fills the role of that and has uh, rather has a successful track record over the last few years. Clayster for me is the perfect addition to the Dallas organization.